Akshay, 30th of July, Thursday morning. The BBC News comes from Howard Hughes. Good morning. It's one of the biggest changes to transport in Windsor for a generation. Local people are being asked to vote on plans for a new underground tunnel to link the town's two railway stations. If it goes ahead, it will change access to the town for commuters and tourists. George Bathurst is behind the plans as managing director of the Windsor Rail Link Company. Now, normally infrastructure is a blight on the environment and a, vi a visual scar, but because this tunnel will be underground, there'll be nothing to see. But it, um, some of the car parking that currently visually blights the riverside area. So again, we can do much better than this and actually create a more pleasant environment for residents and visitors to enjoy. I want to start in Windsor today. One of the biggest changes we've seen, certainly to transport in Windsor for a generation, is being discussed. Everyone gets a chance to vote on these plans for a new underground tunnel that links Windsor's two railway stations and um, just makes it much easier to get in and around by train. The Royal Borough Council keen to see what local people think of the idea. They say the rail tunnel will transform how tourists and commuters get in and out. We'll talk to the council in a second or two, but first of all, we went to Windsor and asked people what they thought. I think it's very good, actually, you know, because then that, uh, you can all go on to the... Uh Save chopping and changing, you know, and that's what we need a bit more, continuity. It sounds a very good idea, and uh, I'm sure I'll be able to use it sometime, right? especially going to Heathrow, which is a very good idea, yeah. Of course it is, yes. yes. Anything like that's a good idea. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we can useful. use. Yes, yes. I think it's quite a good idea, if they can afford it, because um, these things, they get a bit out of hand. They give you a price when it starts, but after a year or so, it's nearly doubled, normally so if they can fund it properly and get it done you know on time and everything i think it could be a good idea it will make people less stress more easy for them i like think if people is less stress it's better for their health so that's what people in windsor have been saying to us if you go to our facebook page right now bbc berkshire on facebook you can watch a video that we've made which shows exactly where in Windsor uh, this tunnel is going to be, where it will sit, what difference it will make. So if you're interested, then BBC Berkshire on Facebook to watch the video that we've made trying to demonstrate this. Let's uh, talk you through it with Colin Rayner, who's in charge of transport at the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead Council. Morning, Colin. Good morning. So just explain this in words. For people who are new to this, where does the tunnel go? What difference does it make? Oh, we've actually had a, a change of heart in the council because at the moment we don't have enough information from the developer exactly where the route is and before we're going out to public consultation we've, we've asked for more uh, information from the public company that's d developing it because our concern is that this will be a major infrastructure change from for Windsor and if we get it wrong the people of Windsor and the rest of the country will never forgive us for a lifetime. Do you feel enthusiastic about it in principle? I have got concerns with many residents because there is advantages and the disadvantages and our concern is is that it was, will take a five year build time and you know it will be upsetting a lot of residents for five years so we've got to make sure that we get it right and also is that We've got to take in the whole of Windsor and the effect it will have on the rest of Windsor. Right. And but we just don't feel there's enough information there for... Do you like the principle, though, of linking the, the towns to railway lines and stations to make it easier for people to move around? Uh, my view is that the principle sounds fine, but we didn't get our railway line from um, Heathrow Airport to Stain Station because they said there wasn't enough capacity... And I have been convinced that if we do link the two railway lines, that there is enough capacity from, uh, from Slough to Windsor to Waterloo. I'm talking about line capacity. Uh, and at the moment, we've got to get um, network, uh, uh, network, sorry, the people who own the railway lines, Network Rail, t to take this scheme on. At the moment, it's a private developer. Right, and, and when you say take it on, you mean take it on after the construction well, or take it on from the very beginning? Well, they've got to, they've got to, want, to want, want the idea and they want to do it because it's a government act of parliament to, to change a railway line and it's not within the remit of a, of a, of a council. Gotcha. So you, this is why you're now uh, wanting more information but also asking local people to, to take part in some kind of plebiscite? Yeah, well, basically, we've, 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 at the moment, we've stopped the uh, consultation because we need to find out if the government is for this scheme and Railtrack are for this scheme. There's no point in us planning this fantastic project for Windsor 
unless Railtrack have signed up to it and are happy for it to go ahead, and also the government. Uh, Colin, thank you very much indeed for that. Colin Rayners from the council. Richard Dexter, tunnelling director at Joseph Gallagher Tunnelling, sounded like just the man to have a look at these plans for us. Hi, Richard. Good morning. Grateful you were willing to have a look at the plans. What do you What do you think of them? Um, my first impression, they were inspired. I hadn't realised Windsor was... Uh, the two train stations were both blind ends, um, even having lived that way for nearly 10 years. Um, they're very clever. They're a very, very clever solution to what has been a perennial problem because the scheme has been on the cards for probably the best part of 30 or 40 years. And are we talking about like, digging something akin to an underground tunnel between the two? Um, very similar. Very, very similar. And ha ha dare I ask, how easy is it to do that? Um, it, there are a number of technical challenges with the uh, Windsor uh, geology, but um, nothing that uh, I saw in the public consultation documents is uh, out with the wit of man. It's all within the technical capability of the industry. So it's, it's doable. Have we got any sense how much it costs? Maybe that doesn't matter when it's private money, but it's interesting. Uh, uh, the, the, I, I haven't, um, I, I'm not going to give you a, a, an off the cuff number, but um, I've looked at the company website and it seems to be extremely well um, thought through and the numbers seem extremely logical. And if the people proposing it have um, thought through the funding, then I, I would suggest they're, they're in the right area. It's on their head. Uh, Richard, thank you very much. Richard Dexter, tunnelling expert now, 714. What do you make of what you're hearing? Have a look at the video on Facebook. Tell us what you think. Are you enthusiastic about the idea of there being a tunnel linking Windsor's two railway stations? My number is 0345 900 1041. George Bathurst is the managing director of the Windsor Rail Link Company, also a local councillor here in the studio. Morning, George. George. Good morning. Talk us through the plan. What, what exactly is it you want to do? The idea is to link the two railway lines in Windsor. One of them goes to Slough at the moment as just a shuttle and the other goes to Waterloo. And for historical reasons, they don't talk to each other. And the idea is to fix that. And we found a way of doing that that has um, previously eluded people. So we're building a tunnel right. between the two lines. You've got t two railway stations on different lines, on different sides of Windsor, but there's no way of getting from one to the other except by you know walking through the town centre. Exactly. And previously, people have tried to connect up the stations, but that's very difficult because they're at different levels and lots of listed buildings in between, um, and we've solved that by linking the lines and building a new station adjacent to the existing... What Windsor problem Central. are you trying to solve? Um, Windsor has some of the worst rail connections in the country, some for a com comparable town, um, and we also have 7 million visitors a year, and most of those come by road at the moment, and that's becoming increasingly unsustainable. So we want to deliver a nice experience for visitors, and we want to make things better for Windsor and so that companies can start locating like themselves. Tunnelling under Windsor, a yes. bit like a sort of underground model. Yeah, exactly. So you can walk from one station to the other. How much will all that cost to do? Uh, it's not a walking from there. It's, um, it's connecting the trains up, so you have a, a through line for the trains. We estimate that will cost about £220 million. Pounds. Wow. And where does that come from? Um, really, if you consider, if you've got just 2% of the tourism market to um, to persuade them to come by train rather than car, that would pay for it on its own. Um, we estimate actually the revenue from fare will be about £10 million pounds a year, so that should pay for it easily. Right. But that, that all that money, of course, comes later. Where does the money come from to start off with? Uh, there are two ways of funding railways. Um, the, the way normally uh, for the last 100 years or so has been for the state to, to pay for that. Um, and we propose a second innovation, which is actually to do this for the first time um, since the original railways to fund it privately. And that should hopefully lead to longer, lower fares in the long but run. But funding privately from what? A, a, a just uh, a group of people with loads of money? There's many pension funds who would love to invest in, in infrastructure. It provides good long-term returns. So it means that actually your pension is better funded as well as a result of this railway. Right. This is the uh, council's head of Transport, Colin Rayner, who was on the show earlier. Well, I think it's fair to say he's got some concerns about this. Oh, we've actually had a, a change of heart in the council because at the moment we don't have enough information from the developer exactly where the route is. And before we're going out to public consultation, we've, we've asked for more uh, information from the public company that's d developing it because our concern is that this will be a major infrastructure change from for Windsor and if we get it wrong the people of Windsor and the rest of the country will never forgive us for a lifetime. Do you feel enthusiastic about it in principle? I have got concerns with many residents because there is advantages and the disadvantages and our concern is is that 
it was will take a five year build time and you know it'll be upsetting a lot of residents for five years so we've got to make sure that we get it right and also is that we've got to take in the whole of Windsor and the effect it will have on the rest of Windsor. Right. And we just don't feel there's enough information there for... Do you like the principle, though, of linking the the towns to railway lines and stations to make it easier for people to move around? Uh, My view is that the principle sounds fine, but we didn't get our railway line from um, Heathrow Airport to Stane Station because they said there wasn't enough capacity... And I have been convinced that if we do link the two railway lines, that there is enough capacity from uh, from Slough to Windsor to Waterloo. I'm talking about line capacity. Uh, and at the moment, we've got to get um, network, uh, uh, network, sorry, the people who own the railway lines, Network Rail, t- to take this scheme on. At the moment, it's a private developer. So that's Colin Rayner, Head of Transport at the Council, George Bathurst, representing the developers here in the studio. You haven't persuaded the local authority. You're on the local authority. Uh, yes, but I don't sit on any of the meetings um, involved with this. But um, it, it, sometimes it's a bit like persuading a horse to do a jump. Sometimes you have to go round a few times. So, um, And I think when we look back at how the railways were built in the first place and the beautiful buildings we've got um, in Windsor as a result, um, but there were actually fights in the street over um, not building that. So we, we, uh, we shouldn't imagine that building these things is easy. Um, however, it was very encouraging to hear Colin Rayner, despite his reservations, agreeing in principle that it's a good thing to do. Um, what about, you know, he says, not, you, you haven't provided sufficient information for the council to be able to take a proper view. He says uh, it'll cause too much disruption to local people over a five-year period while it's being built, and there isn't enough line capacity anyway for the thing to work properly. They're pretty big criticisms, aren't they? Yeah, he just needs to read the papers, um, <laughs> the, 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 his briefing papers. I mean, we think the um, d- development time will be under two years and possibly under one year for the main tunnel, bearing in mind um, that Crossrail hasn't taken as long as he thinks um, it would take to build just 300 yards in Windsor. Um, And... We've got um, the support of Network Rail. They've written um, to the council, and indeed council officers have visited Network Rail and, um, and, and received their support. We've had a letter from the minister from the DFT saying um, it's in line with policy and they welcome it coming forward, and even going so far as saying they're very happy to be funded by um, the franchise. OK, oh, George, thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you, too, for taking us on a little tour. So if you want to see this, it's easy to visualise it, uh, look at the video, which is on our Facebook page right now, BBC Berkshire on Facebook, and have a look. Keep us in touch with how it goes. Uh, George, thank you. It's 8.14.